I made this illustrative photograph after my second deployment to Iraq. I called it mind-blowing. It's about the unseen effects of post-traumatic stress disorder. The vehicle on fire was a Humvee from 410 Mountain Division. They got hit by a Hellfire missile that launched from an Apache gunship while they were on patrol. We went to help them thinking they were under attack because they called it in as direct fire over the radio. We didn't find out what happened until much later. If it makes you feel any better, the entire crew made it out alive. One broke his ankle, another broke his arm, but that's all they got. The model in the photograph is another photographer and one of the very few friends I had left after PTSD-induced symptoms caused me basically to lose myself a little bit. In fact, he's dealt with some of the same demons I've encountered. At this time, in our unit, it, and actually around the military in general, it was not an acceptable thing to, to, to admit that uh, anything was wrong. And a lot of people didn't know anything was wrong. I didn't know I had anything wrong with me. Most people with PTSD probably don't know until they come back from the war uh, years later, try to adjust and can't. PTSD is the new normal. It was the new normal then when I was in combat camera. I'm not the only person that, that suffered from these injuries. And I say injuries because it's, it's really two. It's an injury of the mind. And uh, there's also what they're looking into now is the moral injury that comes with it. No one could admit we were all suffering. Uh, some people knew and wouldn't talk about it and, so, and just didn't want to admit it because that could end your career. And there's a lot of pressure, especially in a bad economy, when there's nowhere else to go. Only years later have I been properly diagnosed and treated in a way where, for one, it's okay to have PTSD and, oh, you can cure it. And then number two, the treatment is actually working very well. It's, it's not easy, but I have a very good therapist now. As I struggle with the PTSD symptoms now from events that occurred in 2007 and 2008, I am just beginning to come to terms with the effects this has had on my life for the past five years. I have also just begun to understand the worst pain is the moral injury that in most cases comes alongside PTSD, and it's really caused by fighting what is an unjust war. I didn't understand before about why it hurts so bad inside, but I finally learned that's what happens when you do something or are a part of something that is morally wrong. This wasn't G.I. Joe fighting Cobra, this was people killing people. And if the world were to judge America today, I fear they would not issue their judgment only on the actions of the thousands of young men and women like me who answered what we thought was freedom's call, but also by the millions of citizens who have stood idly by while our own government has been subverted into a tyranny and said nothing because they were comfortable and have enabled the bloodshed over and over and over again. Eisenhower was right about it, Kennedy died because of it, and now the Constitution of the United States of America has been all but burned up and thrown away. It's because of this terrible monstrous tool of the elite called the military-industrial complex. As soon as war became profitable, man has found reasons to go to war and exploit it. If our founding fathers would have had any more foresight, they may have never ratified the Constitution, thus never making the destruction and death caused by the United States possible. I don't say this because I hate America. I love my country. I don't say this because I hate Americans. I love my family and my friends. What I find so difficult to come to terms with is that so many people have grown accustomed to living this way. They fail to see the truth. 
The truth is that this could all end if we want it to. We the people are in complete control. We the people must accept responsibility for our government's actions. We the people must hold our government accountable as a parent might scold a child if they got into a fight at school or even worse. When I enlisted in the Air Force in 2001, I swore an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I believe now is the time we have to look inside 